Okay. Shall we have a little <laughs> chat? <laughs> Good. Where do you play if I may? Charlotte, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. We are so excited and honored to have you here. Um, just because we're huge fans of everything that you do. And it's exciting to have you here to talk about music because I think this pushed both of us to explore that side of you that we Absolutely. didn't know as well as your acting side. Right. Yeah. So that was actually a fun act of discovery that we got to go through this week. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, of course. Um, and I mean, there are just like so many ways that we could start talking to you about these things. I guess um, maybe a, an obvious way for us is we're just so curious to know the different experience that you've had talking about music that you have written yourself mm. this time as opposed to albums in the past and how it feels different to talk about it, how it feels different to perform it, just what that has changed for you to be writing it now. It is different because yeah. it's, of course, it's much more personal, much more intimate and secret um, uh -huh. than the experiences I've had before. But I, it's just different in the sense that also before I was just proud to be able to work with Beck, just watching him work, trying to learn. And it was all an experience. Right. Uh -huh. uh, this time it was more like working on myself, yeah. um, with myself, and uh, of course with Sebastian, who I was really longing to to try and do something together. I loved his music, so I loved the idea of a team and not being just on my own. Mm -hmm. But for the lyrics, now that I have to talk about them, yeah, um, <laughs> it's 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 really a different. With films, you sort of you're with a crew already. They're the first audience, and right. it's it's already out there uh -huh. in a sense. With music, you're very much um, in a sort of privacy world and not sharing at all. Mm -hmm. So when you have to on at the end of all this uh, explain and talk yeah. that's the I find the difficult part but it's also a very something I I feel stupid not not to have um, um, known that this was going to happen and you know it, <laughs> it wasn't felt, in your mind when you were putting no. this together and say oh I'm going to have to address no not things. at all mm. I felt comfortable with what I had to say uh, I didn't feel that I was that it was becoming too personal or that I would be embarrassed and I'm not embarrassed at all today it's just that I have to explain difficult things you know the the loss of my sister I thought um that the words would talk by themselves <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Right. yeah I mean also I know musicians often hate to explain their lyrics understandably of course yeah but with this project, it is so sort of understandably taken from your life and your yeah. a lot of journals, a lot of just openly personal. And so I imagine when people are asking, they're they're really what they're asking is tell me more about that experience. Right. You know, not <laughs> what does this mean, but yeah, like yeah, tell sure. me about that. And that's mm -hmm. and that was new. That's hard. That's intrusive in a way. Yeah, but the fact that I was uh, that I wanted to talk about those subjects that were difficult and painful, but at the same time, trying to write about it was the only thing I could write about. Mm -hmm. And it felt, uh, I loved that time, that right. time of on my own with the music, trying to, trying to express whatever, you know, whatever I was obsessed with at, uh, at the time. So I'm, it, it did mean a lot meant a lot and it was uh, a whole process also mm -hmm. but it didn't I didn't do it as a um, it wasn't therapeutic therapeutic yeah I didn't try and you know <laughs> talk so that I'd feel better not uh -huh. at all it was just uh, inspiring you it was the only I had already engaged in the process of this new album yeah then my sister died and I, so mm -hmm. it was already I was already in that dynamic of trying to to write uh -huh. and it's just that 
I couldn't write about anything else. Yeah. It's the only thing I wanted to to think about and right. talk and yeah. Whereas and and when when your father passed, you had the kind of opposite reaction, Completely right? Completely the opposite. Couldn't I don't think know about why. It musically or yeah, I think it's because I was nineteen, and at the time it was like a national grieving. Yeah. Uh, everybody. Literally. Yeah. Not even metaphorically. Yeah. No, no. Everybody right. had something to express. Was feeling. Um, very sad about his his death, but I was his daughter, and people didn't really. I mean, it's it's a, it was a very weird time. So I had to shut myself mm-hmm. off, and still be very polite, and you know, understand what people had to say, but I couldn't express anything myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I actually, remember my grandfather died last year. We were very close, and I remember feeling a weird. Um, pulling away from other members of my family who are grieving because I felt like your grief is not my grief and I don't want my grief to be tainted by yeah. yours and I, and I just need to like hold it all in myself yeah. and I don't want to have to think about yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really, I didn't feel like sharing that at all. Exactly. Yeah. And in, in a very um, down, well, um, uh, concrete, I don't know how you say Concrete? Con- concrete like. way of um, dealing with it was that his at the cemetery his tomb was completely public i ev- each time i went there people were oh, there yeah um nice. and the only place where i was completely on my own with him or the 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 souvenir of him yeah. was his house mm-hmm. that i kept completely secret and i didn't mm-hmm. open it and i didn't move anything so it was a it was a weird way of dealing with Grieving and I mean, what is your own way, right? It, your <laughs> it went on for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. So, does but this process feel like you've cracked something open or like purged something or something new has shifted now? No, but I think I'm it's fine for me to talk about it. I don't feel uh, violated or uh, I've no, I mean it in a good way. Like, you not there's a, f- a freedom or like a liberation to. Yeah, th- the fact that I have spoken about these things openly, mm-hmm. you think? And and written. I mean, this being the first project that you've written mostly all yourself, and it is so personal, it is so kind of, it might not be therapeutic, but it's, but it's your life and it's very yeah. vulnerable. And does that now feel like a freeing of for you to now write whatever you want in a way that is, you might be uh, less censoring well, of? I don't know. I I know that it was a. It just happened that way. Now, if if I want to be very honest with myself, I think the next album will say if I'm if I'm if I can write lyrics or not. Mm. Because the f- this was this was just a, such a unique. Yes, it was very spontaneous, and it I didn't. Even though for years I felt that I couldn't do, you know, I couldn't choose words not thinking about my father's words and so the it was quite heavy on my shoulders it's less heavy on that um that it it feels le- less yeah. heavy but but um being able to write a new album will be a real challenge i think because the 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 inspiration has to come from somewhere sort yeah. of in and a i new, don't want it to place. come from a dark right. place right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i great for art but hard for the human <laughs> yeah but also i i think um i don't know i have to explore different I, i'm not sure i'm not sure what i want to say and that's why i have i think i'm limited in the sense that i'm artists always have things to say and uh-huh. they're you know quite well i think quite productive i don't feel an artist in that way mm. i feel i've said this mm-hmm. now I, I'm stepping back Go back to yourself <laughs> yeah yeah well what about your choice to start directing your videos how did oh. that come about and how was that process for you that was so exciting because it happened at, at the very end when the record was was done uh-huh. uh, but I was sort of taking my time not really agreeing to the I, I don't know, just saying that it was done. Yeah. Um, and during that time, I was able to switch to all the visuals. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did ask Lars von Trier 
if he would help me on the first video and he said no and he told me to direct myself and it was my first step he yeah. helped in the sense to because he gave me tools and he he told me exactly what to do uh -huh. in I terms of technically, technically or well no it, like a a dogma a sort of a dogma for my for my video is there okay. any secret of that you could share <laughs> no no it was just very specific of uh, illustrating each word uh, with um, footage, okay. either existing footage or things that I would I would shoot myself, but it it had to be sort of um, because the song is so repetitive. It made sense. It was like um, inventing a new language. Mm -hmm. Which so, song was that for? Uh, rest. Okay. So it was fun. It was fun to to go back in my memory and to see what footage I was hoping for. Then the whole thing of asking for rights was <laughs> oh, wow. a nightmare. Yeah. I didn't realize. Because there's a ton of clips in that, yeah. right? Like, and you must have just spent and, so much time. Yeah. And, <laughs> and also films that have That's marked me, but so important films. Yeah. yeah. Right. It wasn't, I mean, I the kid yeah. I was able to get, which it was the one I was hoping for the most. Okay. But some, What is that from? The kid, yeah. uh, what do you mean? Wait. Uh, the kid, um, oh, the kid Charlie that's Chaplin. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, the film, The, the Kid. Film. Oh, oh, the film, yeah. The Kid. So it yeah, was a big it. deal having that image that I really wanted. Yeah. But for other stuff, I didn't I didn't get it. I yeah, had right. to replace it with other <laughs> other solutions. Well, I'm sure your budget was only so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that was a first step. Uh-huh. And it meant that having ideas for other videos, not on the same dogma thing, mm -hmm. um, I, I just went forward because, it, yeah, I was already there. So it was very exciting. I had a story for each uh, video. I was able to, to ask my son to be in one of them. Uh -huh. uh, so he's the very handsome young man <laughs> I, I follow around. Um, <laughs> And my daughters were in another one. It was continuing to be very personal and family oriented, right? Uh, because that's the way I think that's the way my father um, introduced me to cinema, music, mm -hmm. everything. We used uh -huh. to. It was very natural to do it um, inside our family. I mean, right. um, so I. Yeah, I continued. Yeah, did did when you were coming when these songs were forming? Did any of these images happen then, as opposed to creating them later and deciding? No, no everything no, later. Everything later. I can't do, and that's why the last year of not having released it when it was ready was very helpful because I could suddenly shift to to the visual and only deal with that, and have quite a lot of time to. Yeah. You know, to do six videos, it was it, for me. It was a big deal. Do you like directing? I love being behind a camera. Yeah, I love observing. The thing is, with videos, it, the economics is so low that you you can't take your time. Right. <laughs> so right. it's all quite a hassle, and you have yeah. to run run behind time. But still, the well, for instance, just shooting my son was mm -hmm. just incredible to have that in intimacy of working together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm about to shoot my first music video for an artist. Oh. Do you have any advice for me? Because <laughs> <laughs> I find it a little daunting. Like, yeah. I just wonder what the key... Have you shot a music video mm -hmm. for JAR as a director? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Oh, no. And no. I, I don't feel a professional at all. No, the, <laughs> the thing is, I, I hate, um, how do you call the, les synchro, the, when you have to sing. Yeah, right. Oh, like uh, lips, like the, yeah. The lip syncing yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> they always want those in. Right. But, uh, I'm not going to have that in this video. Not okay. sure. Yeah. Performing. No, the artist won't be, yeah. So it'll just be a story to oh, the good, good. song, yeah. But no, okay, I I'll don't just have study any your advice. videos then. If you don't want to give <laughs> no, me direct no, no. advice, <laughs> um, we were just having a conversation about something that I would love for you to weigh in on because we, because I just am so fascinated by this topic and it just feels so relevant right now. And as someone who has acted in other people's films and now you're directing and you've performed music written by other people and you're writing your own stuff now, how 
correct is it to tell a story about someone who has not lived your experience or whose experience you have not lived? Like if I'm watching Nymphomaniac, I'm like, wow, this is a very raw, real experience of a woman's life. But then I remember who the director is and then I'm conflicted. But then you're the conduit for the story. So then that brings me back to feeling that it's real. But, you know, and Mm -hmm. it's so complicated but as someone who's writing and directing now and thinking about the stories that I want to tell I'm not always confident whose stories I'm allowed to tell or who you know who I can tell in a true way but you're never truthful anyway yeah I mean even singing your own lyrics you're not you're behind the mic right and uh, there's some kind of a of a game Hmm. in any condition you you put it you yeah know, there's so as truthful as you want to, to be as an actor um that's the beauty of it is to be able to lose yourself and then hmm. come back to reality and and play with with that but i think that the distance is quite nice in fact yeah that's true yeah but like the idea of, you know, could I write a story for a woman of color, for example, when that's not been my lived experience? Oh, I think you can. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're authorized to. It's <laughs> important to feel the freedom of being able to to write even if you don't. Mm. I've never felt, uh, how do you say, legitimate? Mm-hmm. Um, as a singer, as an actor, I I always felt a fraud. So portraying someone who, you know, in difficult conditions and having always been a rich kid, mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah. so I, I I felt that I didn't earn what I was getting. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, now I feel confident that uh, I can. Even if I don't feel legitimate, I'm happy to still do it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Is there something that would shift or could shift that would make you feel legitimate? I mean, you clearly are. I feel that I don't (laughs) like being legitimate. I like having the excuse. Maybe it is an excuse and it's just a it's just a way of being able to to not pass or uh, it's that. It's as if I had never made the choice to be an actress Mm -hmm. because it it happened very soon and I was young. Um, I never really took the decision. And it gives me the excuse of um, failing. I don't know. It's it a defa- a, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Um, and that's that's one of the things that's so glorious about the record, um, the sort of like juxtaposition of the lyrical content, which is so mm-hmm. heavy and 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 dark and deep and and at times just really tough but the music is so bouncy and yeah. disco and and poppy and and fun and it's a, it's a really listenable record but that's what i was hoping for right it's almost a mm. it, it almost hides it or buries it mm-hmm. yeah and allows i needed the this opposition because making a record with sad lyrics or hard lyrics um, with a sad s- music would have been, for me, terrible. <laughs> right, right. So I needed that balance of being completely um, opposed. And I remember Sebastian had a one doubt on the last song called Les Oxalis because I was talking about a ballad in a cemetery and it's it's a lot to do with... I mean, it's quite, quite dark. Uh, and... As you said, the the music is very disco and and quite jolly. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> and he said, "Are you sure you'll not regret this of saying these words on this music?" And and I that's when I understood what we what we had done until then, and I I hadn't figured it out uh, exactly, but now I I knew that that was exactly what I wanted, that opposition. Does he come? to you with a track a beat or do you like where you say I have these lyrics both because I started working without him with Conan Moccasin an artist that I I really love and he started doing melodies on a guitar and I started trying to write lyrics and then I I met Sebastian and really wanted to work with him 
and I had a few songs that were already there. I mean, the melodies were were there. Uh, and s then Sebastian uh, composed new things, okay. and I would go back home with his music and try and figure out mm -hmm. words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how is the act of performing for you? I haven't started yet. Okay. The I've only had two experiences, mm -hmm. one with uh, touring with Beck's album mm -hmm. and with Beck's musicians. Mm -hmm which was uh, my first time, so completely overwhelming and, <laughs> and new and traumatizing, but at the same time, very exciting. Yeah. And Coachella was oh, wow. something that I I never imagined. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just that crowd. Uh, <laughs> then the second time was with Conan Moccasin. It was much smaller and mm. more intimate. This time, I have the impression that I'll finally stop pretending that it's you know I, I was trying to um, I don't know if, if it was trying to pretend that I was comfortable I don't think I did pretend I was comfortable but um, not being myself maybe and this time I feel that if people come and see me they know mm -hmm. what they're getting mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not, no, I'm not going to transform myself in a performer and, no yeah. I, I'll only do what I can do. Well, that sounds like a great place to be in, to say, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be me, I'm not going right. to pretend to be this yeah. other more whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's it's That's, the only sustainable way yeah. to do it, I think. And your fans will <laughs> certainly appreciate that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I hope so. Absolutely. I, I'm happy to be behind a piano a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a be, buffer. Yeah, yeah, that'll be easier. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite of all of the things you do you know, perform in film and theater and write music and perform music, of all of the processes within mm. all of those things, where are you most at ease? Or like, what's your favorite part? You say, I look forward to like having lunch with the crew or like, I love <laughs> learning my lines or I love getting my costume or I love being in front of the camera. Like what is the most comfortable you feel? Well, that's a good question because the most comfortable is not what I prefer. I don't uh. like being comfortable. And sometimes the uneasiness and the um, very edgy uh, position you're in with a film, for instance, and not knowing if you're, you'll be able to get there, having that challenge is, after all, very exciting. In the process, you're too much in the process. But looking back, it's such exciting times. Um, Music is so different because it's, uh, I don't know, it's its being with yourself quite mm -hmm. a lot. So it's much more solitary and, and uh, calmer. Yeah. There's something much calmer. So I think going from take two to take three or... <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's Somewhere exciting. where you're already in it, you're, you're yeah. on a journey already. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have to get your take on, because we try to keep up on this show since it's called Soul Sisters, and we talk to women who are in the entertainment industry with what's going on in politics and this right. these 100 this women uh, who are in the news right now. Um, French, French women. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, that's new. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, Catherine Deneuve and yeah. 99 more. <laughs> right. um, and it's just... It's a super complicated issue, as all of this is. Mm -hmm, and, is. I, and I've been watching a lot of commentary that I think is very interesting on all sides of it. And I think it's important for us to... Should we just say what this all, is? Yes, basically, these 100 women signed, uh, wrote an open letter basically saying that the, the idea that men ha should be free to, quote, pester women and that, that there's sort of a... A way we're going overboard here with with the Me Too and Times Up and everything like mm -hmm. that. That's mm -hmm. sort of approaching it from the other side. Um, yeah. So just just curious if you if you are if you are feeling in any engagement with this. If you have strong feelings in any way. Um, I do have strong feelings, but I they're not very stable. Sure. I right. don't know for sure where I stand. Yeah. And being here and hearing the those voices from France, I feel, of course, they're right. It's it's 
too exaggerated, too much. But it's that culture, and we, I come from that place, um, and suddenly I see uh, the Golden Globes and the um, yeah. the times, times up. up. Yeah, me, the, too. me too. Yeah, yeah. but the, that speech, the oh, beautiful oh, speech Oprah. she had. Yes. But then all those faces in the audience, and it was like a sect of, I don't know, I felt, I didn't feel that I was a part of that crowd. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't feel... It was a, it's the exaggeration I don't like. So mm. I, I, of course I feel that it's a wonderful thing that women will speak up. Mm -hmm out and and uh speak up and um and it it demands a lot of courage for some of them of course but at the same time to point your finger on all these men i i don't know i feel that what i find terrible is this twitter thing or the, the you know mm. or hashtag uh, yeah. the, mm -hmm. that's what i find terrible is to be able to crush someone out of you don't know it's mm. not you don't know what it's based on you don't have proof uh -huh. you know it's you need to we're also reactionary it all just happens fat like you tweet something and then it's out and then yeah i mean that whole culture of yes the way things are processed and disseminated and yeah i mean on the one hand it's an incredible tool for people who yeah. would never be heard otherwise to be able to hear their grievances on the other hand it sometimes simplifies very complicated matters or yeah it, i it, think what you said is perfect is that you have very strong feelings but for them to be conflicted is a fair thing that doesn't is not allowed for within something like Twitter. Like not coming out straight, clearly confirming this is how I feel, this is what it is, yeah. this is a black and white thing, I think is, is somewhat lost. The people nuance take of positions right. and it's some it bursts out and it's uh, it's mm -hmm. out of it's out of everyone's hands. Mm -hmm. And I find it uh, I find it quite scary how you can yeah, how you can crush someone. But on the other side, of course, having a woman be crushed, uh, <laughs> you know, with what have has happened to her, of course, um, maybe speaking out that way means that it's the only way she could do it. Yeah. Maybe. Right. Yeah. Well, times of change and revolution can feel very <laughs> yeah, extreme, right. and then hopefully they come to some exactly. plateau where things level off again. <laughs> yeah. so it will remain to be seen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, w uh, when does your tour begin? I'm starting very slowly, uh, rehearsing, into it soon. yeah, and doing uh, first dates in Europe, uh -huh. and then uh, so that that'll be in March, I think, and then a bit of Japan. Uh -huh. And then maybe uh, the rest of the world towards the summer, maybe. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. We hope you get to New York. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, yeah, I haven't home. seen yeah. those U.S. dates yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, okay, well, the album Rest is out. And Absolutely it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. And any other projects on the horizon for you this year that you uh, can say? No, apart from touring and yeah. s finally... Um, feeling feeling quite comfortable with this idea, and it's yeah. not like something I don't want to look at. So <laughs> I'm no, I'm happy it's finally happening, and then I'll be shooting a film, hopefully in September with Yvonne Attal, my mm -hmm. my longtime partner, as an actress or as an actress. Okay. No, no, as an a him as a director and an actor, and uh, me only as an actress. Okay. Okay, Charlotte, thank you so much thank for being you. on the show. Thanks a lot.